this is your girl Rasa out in Singapore, and I'm so glad you're back here listening to the Night Owl Podcast. This channel is all about talking through some of the thoughts that I've been going through, some of the life decisions that I've made, and then, of course, any kind of tips, tricks, and tools that I could teach you in the span of about 10 minutes about how you could maybe manage your life or make some different decisions if you're deciding that this is not the life you want and you want something more. So with that being said, I'm hoping that I can just jump into the topic at hand. Today I'm talking about the breakup. And if you listened to the last episode, it was about the buildup, which is that place in your relationship sometimes when you have been conditioned not to do specific behaviors, but it's behaviors that you really want to behave. Uh, behave, embody, so that the other person can tell that you're dissatisfied and you're trying to make it better for yourself as well. But for those of us who have been conditioned and taught that that is not appropriate in a relationship, we're actually been um, conditioned to believe that if you love somebody, you put the relationship before anything else, you try as best you can to keep the peace at all costs. And with that being said, if you have to keep the peace outside of yourself, chances are you're actually starting a war within yourself. And that's the part that I want to talk about today, the reason for the breakup in the first place. Now, last episode, we talked about all the different ways that we we tend to hold our tongue. We don't speak up about things. Or we did speak up at one point, and because of the reaction that we got, we learned very quickly whether that was, whether that was worth it or not. And for those of us who choose peace and choose to put the relationship above everything else, that tends to be a very easy decision. Do I want to deal with chaos in the house Or do I want to slowly learn to let go? Which means I'm going to change the way I behave so that you get what you want. And even though I don't get what I want, I'm learning to see if I can actually live without the things that I thought I wanted at some point. And that's actually been the story of my life. I don't know if you've been there at all, but this is kind of something that I've learned. A lot of times in our minds, we've built up this idea of the luxurious life. And sometimes that looks like material possessions. It looks like being able to travel places. Either way, it tends to be about spending money and being pampered and having more than enough to be able to see that, you know, somebody loves us. This is our gauge for whether people love us or not, how they treat us, what they treat us with. But from my understanding, because more often than not, I haven't had a lot of money in my hands. I've learned that there are so many other ways that you can show people that you love them. And if I can learn to put aside some of those things, those standards that I once had about whether somebody loves me or not, this is, you know, this is how they would treat me, this is what they would spend on me, this is how they would show me. If I can learn to live without those things, I've learned that maybe what I was asking for was not important to the quality of the relationship itself. So with that being said, let's jump right in. I want to talk about the reason for the breakup. And for me, I'm actually going to pick apart the reason that I left my husband. It wasn't just a simple breakup. It was a divorce and there were children involved. And it was across the world because I definitely decided to leave and not leave and go down the street to my mother's house. My mother's house was not down the street. I lived in Williamsburg. I lived in Hampton, Virginia, and I moved to Singapore to my mother's house. And the reason for that was the fact that I didn't see any hope anymore. There were many, many times that I kept talking about things. I kept asking for things. And unfortunately, the way that it was received was not the passion that people, you know, try to to glorify on TV at all. It was not passionate. It was not uh, conducive to an environment where I felt like I would be seen, heard, and appreciated at all. And so even though I asked in many different ways, I tried you know, many different techniques to kind of adjust what I wanted and see if I could deal with less. The minute I realized that I could deal with less and I would still be okay was the minute I started getting over the relationship itself. So what does that kind of look like? I spoke about in the last episode the fact that there were so many things that I stopped asking for. I stopped asking for him to spend time with me because he would start justifying the fact that He spent time in so many different places and he was working really hard. He was tired. He just wanted to come home and relax. And I was thinking, okay, well, I've been home all this time and I really wanted to spend time with you. And I want to know that we are still connected on some level. And so that quality time between the two of us would be really, really helpful. But because he didn't have the space to actually consider that, I decided, okay, well, how important is this? Can I still function fairly well and still be there for the kids and still run the household without the quality time that I'm so craving? Yeah, absolutely you can. But that means you're sacrificing the bond you had at one point with the person that you're in a relationship with. Because the less time you spend together, the less you start to have in common. Have you ever noticed this? Even with friends, right? You spend so much time together. You want to talk to each other all the time. You spend all day long and all night long. You go to school and talk to them. You go home and talk to them. You just talk to them all the time. And it's the reason why you feel so connected because you're sharing so much 
space with them. You're sharing all of your thoughts. You're sharing all the projects you've done together. You're sharing all of your dreams together. But the minute that communication kind of dies down a little bit, you start to wonder, oh, well, are we still connected the same way? Do they still feel the same way about you? And of course, those doubts start to creep in. So when the doubts came in, I asked. I asked in order to clarify the doubt because it wasn't obvious to me. And because I had to ask, and I asked so often, he felt like I was nagging him, that I was judging him, that I was trying to make him feel like he didn't do enough, and it wasn't the case at all. I thought he did plenty. I just wanted this little bit for me. And me personally, what I try to do is, okay, you're tired, you don't want to do all this stuff when you get home, so let me make it super simple for you. I will take care of everything at home, which means you come home from work, you don't have to worry about whether your clothes are clean. You don't have to worry about whether you have food in your stomach. I have all that taken care of. But you don't have to worry about the kids had to do their homework. Got it. I got it covered. You don't have to worry about that the house is clean. I did that too. All you got to do when you get home, maybe sit down and watch TV and throw your arm around me while we watch TV together. That's all I was looking for. Literally, that's all I was looking for. But even then, he associated me asking that from him as a judgment of him because I feel like deep down inside, he did feel bad that he wasn't spending time with me. But rather than admit that he felt bad, he wanted to defend his position and make himself feel a little bit better by putting me down and making it seem like I was asking for too much. Now, yes, I am assuming what his part of this whole situation is, but as is quite often the case, I've seen it in a lot of the relationships that I coach, I mean, in the present day. So all of those things felt like he was not actually putting in the effort. But I've also feel felt that I was disappointed because I had this expectation that came from TV as well. If you fight, you fight, you argue, you you know, you really kind of put in all of your effort, you really kind of pull out all of the stops and you do the best you can to show the other person that you care, which means a passionate, heated argument. Let me tell you what that doesn't work, okay? For me, a peace-loving soul, I don't like being yelled at. I don't like being put in, a, in my place and shown that I am a terrible person because usually in an argument, it's me telling you that you're wrong and then you telling me that I'm wrong, which means both of us are fighting to prove that there is only one right way, which means there has to be a loser in the conversation. That does not sound loving to me and that does not feel passionate to me because I've been in that receiving end before when I was growing up. My mom used to think it was very, very important to passionately tell me exactly how I was failing and I was not doing well in life, and I was going to screw up, and I was going to end up this deadbeat person because I was not taking care of my studies, and I was not taking care of my responsibilities at home. That did not feel like love to me, and I don't care how many movies I watched, it didn't feel like something that I really wanted to be a part of, honestly. So when people talk about the passion, you're not fighting for me, you're not showing me that I'm you know, important enough, there is a part of that that is true. The fighting to show me that I'm important means that your behavior will change and you will do your best to kind of show me in your own way that I'm important to you. But most of the time, if we don't have the conversation about what feels like love to me versus what feels like love to you, yeah, I'm talking about the five love languages. If we don't have that conversation, there is a lot of wheels just spinning for the, cell, the sake of spinning. And there's a lot of effort being put in the wrong places, which when they're not received well, feels like rejection all over again. And so what happens? We stop trying. We assume that, you know what, I did this, this, and this, and this, and you never actually, you know, you never associate that with being loved. And so apparently you don't think I love you, but I do love you. And I just don't want to try anymore because what's the use? You're not going to, you know, you don't, you don't take it well anyway. What's the point? So here's where the breakup suddenly feels like a full on attack. When I finally told him, which was way after the fact, after I left for Singapore and decided I was going to go visit my grandparents, it was way after. And he started it. He said he filed for separation. He wasn't interested in actually being around me anymore. And yeah, they say that when you leave somebody and you have that space without them, you suddenly realize if you are relieved without their presence or if you actually miss them or not. And there's going to be a bit of both. Because guess what? Who wants to live in an environment where all we do is bicker and fight and there's a passive aggressive cold war going on because I can't say what I mean and I just dig at him all the time. There's like snide comments and sarcasm everywhere. Who wants to live in an environment like that? So of course the minute I left, he felt peace and guess what? So did I. I didn't have to run around wondering what he needed and whether I had to take from what I wanted to be able to give him what he needed. And so I was depleting myself and depriving myself on purpose. It's almost like diet culture. I want him to be happy. That's the ultimate goal. But I need to stop doing this, this, and this in order for him to be happy. And guess what? That makes me miserable. And it makes me bitter. And it makes me not want to do any of those things for him. It makes him the enemy because it's taking from me to be able to give from him. 
But here's the ultimate thing. I didn't realize I was setting myself up for failure. The more I stopped talking to him, the more he assumed things were okay because I wasn't fighting him anymore. By not picking at the things I used to pick at, he assumed that, oh, well, she's gotten over. It's not a big deal. She'd be all right. No, this is where he was sorely mistaken. And I led him astray. I led him to believe that things were all right now because I wasn't pointing out all the things that were pissing me off because I was tired. Who has time for that? I want to keep pointing out the same thing over and over again for you to try something in the wrong direction. And of course, back then I didn't have the tools that I have now. Now, if I were to be married to him, I would sit down and ask him, hey, you know what? What are all the things that you do to show me that you love me? And even that would have been like a, you know, a conversation inviting an argument because I am assuming that he doesn't. And I'm asking you, it almost sounds sarcastic. What are all the things that you do to show me, right? So of course, he's going to be defensive of that. So of course, I'd have to think about a better way to say that. But I'd want to know. All the things that you do to show me you love me, I want to know so that I notice them better. And I want to show you all the things that I do to show you I love you so you notice them better. But more than that, I want to show you the things that would really make a difference in my life. And more often than not, they don't take a lot of effort. When you come home, don't, do, don't, don't give me the usual peck on the cheek that you, know, you do when you're kissing your mother on the way out the door or whatever. Kiss me like you miss me. Show me that you, you, know, you appreciate me being home when you get home. Those are the things we look for, right? When we're, when we're single, those are the things we crave. I'm sitting here in 2022 looking at Valentine's Day coming up tomorrow, and I'm talking in retrospect about all the things that I've had difficulty with, and I'm thinking, if I could go out there and find the perfect guy, I know they don't exist, but I would really love for someone to be home when I get home, and really love for someone who actually wants to cook for me. But I also want someone who knows my favorite foods and knows the things that, you know, that show them in my behavior that I'm tired or I'm not feeling well. You can tell if I have a migraine or not. You can tell when I'm being quiet all of a sudden and I'm moving a little bit slower. I want you to notice. Those are the things I want you to notice because they tell me that you see me. In real time, you see me. And I don't want to have to be able to, you know, tell you every time that I'm not feeling well. I want you to notice because you're used to me being a certain way and suddenly I'm not that way anymore and it bothers you. Because if I'm not at my best, I can't serve you the best, and that would affect your performances and how your life looks like within the house and the relationship. And yeah, maybe a little bit of selfishness on your part would mean that you care enough to notice me because it would affect you. Not because I'm hurting you on purpose or I'm making your life miserable, not like that at all, but because you want me to be a part of your life and me being at my best would mean the best possible quality care and a better relationship in general. I want to be part of those relationships where you talk about leaders and jobs, right? And a leader really takes care of their team. And when they take care of their team, the team would fall over backwards for the, the leader without even asking, you know, without him having to ask to pull in extra hours or take care of this problem until it's completely finished. The team would happily do that because they know their worth is recognized. They know that whenever the, the leader gets a chance, they will show them that appreciation. It's the same in any relationship. Imagine if you had a relationship with two leaders. I give to you because I know that if I give to you well, you will be able to go out into the world and do some real good and make a real impact. And you'd come home and you'd be able to really relax and you'd appreciate the fact that there was a safe space and you can, you know, take off your cape for the day and just be yourself. But also because you know that I can give that to you, I can give you that space where you can really be yourself, the best version of yourself. It's in your best interest to make sure I'm at my peak condition as well, that I am well taken care of, that I eat well, that I sleep well, that I am happy because when I'm happy, I will love you that much better as well. But people don't seem to realize this. And hence, the breakup comes as a rude shock because I've spent a lot of time testing to see how much of what I've been begging for I actually really need. And the minute I start learning that I don't need someone to pay attention to me, I can pay attention to myself. I don't need someone to cook for me, I can cook for myself. I don't need someone to clean up after me, I can clean up for myself. All those things I thought I needed, suddenly I don't need because I've been training myself to make sure that they don't bother me so that when I do leave you, it won't be so hard on me. Have you noticed that? Some of us, that's the way we break up. We get over you first and then we make the announcement. But by the time we make the announcement, there's no coming back from that. There's nothing, nothing that you could possibly say or do that would make me feel like you actually meant what you were saying. That would make me feel that it wouldn't be any more than, you know, 24, 48 hours max that you change your behavior and then you go back to your own ways. Because I stopped giving you the option to change. I made many decisions for you without you knowing. 
And that also is wrong. Why? Because I didn't feel like being rejected. I didn't feel like living in a war zone until you decided you didn't want me anymore. That you couldn't keep up. You didn't want to make all those adjustments. You felt like you were losing yourself to make all those adjustments. And now you don't want to be with me. What did I do? I self-sabotaged. I protected my peace and protected my ego by not allowing you to attack me anymore. And that, that does not serve me and it does not serve you and there's no coming back from that. So do you see why the breakup can be a big mess as well? And it's usually followed by the buildup where I started making a bunch of decisions for myself and it's not allowing you in towards me, closer to me anymore. It's a, it's a silent boundary I set and I guarded without you knowing. Could you imagine that, you know, I had a great big fortress somewhere and it was an amazing, you know, palace and it was filled by a moat, but suddenly there was an invisible force field where you can enter, but you cannot see me. You cannot interact with me. I'm busy with things all the time and I allow you all the space you need because I'm still hoping that you still come looking for me and want to spend time with me. But because it's an invisible force shield and I have not told you that I am blocking you in so many ways now, you have no idea. You just figure, hey, shit, I've got space now and I can enjoy my life finally. There's no nagging, there's no complaining, there's peace and I can just be me. And what you haven't realized is I've locked you out. This is also why the breakup is such a mess. And then there is this aspect of picking up the pieces after the breakup because now you don't have the physical presence of that person, but you definitely made sure that you did have the physical you know, presence of that person either, and now you have an ecosystem off balance. So for those of you out there who have listened to me rant, and I'm hoping you followed along well enough to be able to tell that I'm kind of making some sense here, I hope you'll join me on the next episode because I want to talk about the ecosystem that's off balance and why it is that we need to start fixing it bit by bit while we're in the ecosystem before we decide to change the scenario entirely. I love you guys and I hope this helped.